Hi there everybody, it's Martin Twycross here with another video short, bringing you practical down-to-earth teachings on mediumship and development without the fluff. So in today's video I want to talk about the question, can a medium contact their own loved ones in spirit? Can a medium link to their own in the spirit world? And there's a simple answer to it, the answer is yes. Yes you can be aware of them, yes you can link with them to a degree, but you cannot link with them in the same way that you could link to the loved ones of others. In this video I will go into five reasons why that is the case. I will give you five reasons why you can't link with them in quite the same way. So if that sounds of interest to you then do stay with me. Okay, so can a medium contact their own loved ones in spirit? Let me give you a bit of a disclaimer here. This is Bit of a controversial topic for some. Different teachers will have different views. My views align, I know, with many of the teachers who taught me. And so if you find my teaching helpful, that's great, go with it. If you don't find it helpful, by all means, let it go, I don't mind. So let me give you my take on can a medium contact their own loved ones. So yes, we can be aware of our own loved ones, absolutely. We can feel the presence of our loved ones around us. We can feel their energy close to us. To, we can create a link of sorts to our loved ones. To do that, we do have to have a degree of, of developed ability, a psychic ability, because that uses the psychic senses. So for some people who have a natural ability, they can feel their loved ones around them. For other people who don't have any ability at all, it's a bit more challenging. Similarly, with the psychic senses, we can sometimes smell a smell we associate with them, their perfume, tobacco. Maybe they like working with wood and the beautiful smell of those wood shavings. We may be able to occasionally hear spirit's voice within our mind. Those are all possible things. We can meet our loved ones in our dreams as well. Often we have a dream where we feel we're with our loved ones. And I believe that that does happen and it's reality. And the dream itself feels very different the next day. It stands out, it's very strong, very profound. And it doesn't disappear quite like dreams normally do. Many dreams when we wake up, we lose them straight away. Whereas these dreams stay with us, they last, they have an impact on us. And that's what I believe shows us they're real. Also, we can get signs that our loved ones are around us. We can have lights flicker, we can have objects move or disappear, we can have issues with electrical gadgets and the like. We can have certain synchronicities that when we're thinking of them, certain things stand out or appear or something is said on TV and things happen or we're thinking of them and somebody rings us up and mentions them. We can have those synchronicities that take place. Sometimes we see a butterfly completely out of season for butterfly season or we see a robin that's very tame around us when we're thinking of our loved ones and they can be signs that our loved one is close. Not that our loved one is the robin or the butterfly, you understand, it's just a, a sign they're close to us. And of course we can receive a contact from other mediums, either in private sittings or in demonstrations. We can receive a, a contact from our loved ones that lets them know that they're close to us, absolutely. So many people will tell me that they want to develop mediumship so they can connect to their own. They'll come to a circle or a class or a workshop and they'll tell me, oh, I really want to develop mediumship so I can be connected to my own, I can communicate with my own loved ones, I can have a conversation with my own loved ones whenever I want. And I always think, okay, so I then like to explain to them, well, certainly within development, we can help you develop your psychic awareness, we can help you develop your psychic senses, so that you can sense and feel when your loved ones are close to you. You can become more aware of them. However, at the end of development, it's highly unlikely you'd be able to link with your own loved ones the way you could link to other people's loved ones or the way that other mediums can link to yours. And it's very unlikely you'd be able to have a conversation with them. So having explained to that, some people will stay with the development and go with it. Others may decide, well, if that's not gonna happen, it's not for them and that's their choice. So let me go into five reasons why I believe we can't easily communicate with our own loved ones. Five reasons why connecting to them is not the same as connecting to other people's. So reason number one, I believe mediumship is designed to serve others. Mediumship is there to help others. For me, it's an unwritten rule that mediumship is a gift or an ability that is there to be used in service to other people, to help other people in service to the two worlds. 
where we're linking spirit with their loved one here and we are creating that bridge between worlds and being of service. It's not destined for selfish use, for us to link solely to our own loved ones. That's not its purpose. I believe it has a greater purpose and that greater purpose is service to others. That's reason number one. Reason number two, I believe it's a safety mechanism, a safety valve, if you will. Many people, if they could, they would link to their own loved ones all the time. They would be constantly communicating with their own loved ones as often as they can, 24 seven. If you said to me, you can connect with all your own loved ones in the spirit world, maybe rather than doing a demonstration of mediumship or a sitting, I'd like to spend time connecting to my own. That'd be wonderful. So yeah, I see that, and it's a safety valve. It's designed so that that does not happen. It prevents that from happening, so that we focus upon our development and we focus upon serving others. Now, I do think it's a safety valve that comes with degrees. For some people, it might be a, a strong valve that shuts off your ability to do that. For others, it may allow you to some degree. So depending upon your, your own personality, and whether you would wish to be communicating with your own loved ones 24 seven will be a sliding scale of where it's at with you and your development. But I believe it's there for the vast majority of people. Okay, reason number three is we cannot prove it. We cannot prove we're linking with our own. And let me explain why. If someone comes to me for a sitting and I've never met them before and I get their loved ones through, I bring information through about their loved ones, which proves to be very accurate. And I bring messages that are very meaningful to them and I know nothing about them. It demonstrates to me and to them that I'm linking with their loved ones. It gives me proof of my own mediumship that I am actually linking and doing the job of mediumship and that it is actually mediumship that's taking place. So it's verified by a third party. They confirm that the information I give is accurate. With your own loved ones, we can't have it verified by a third party. You're the one who's giving information to yourself. And you know everything about your own loved ones are a great deal. You know a huge amount about your own loved ones. I know a huge amount about my own loved ones. If I brought through my mum and my dad to myself, I know most of their life story. It's gonna be hard for me to bring through stuff I don't already know. And if I'm bringing their message through to myself, I already know how they would think. I already know how their minds work. I know what they would say in this situation based upon past experience and memory. So how do I know it's really taking place? If I thought of a situation and, and thought of what message they bring through, my own mind is quite capable of creating that very easily. You could argue that, well, you could bring through some information about their lives that you didn't know, but how do we really know we didn't know it? Perhaps we heard it when we were children and we'd forgotten it, or it's buried knowledge. It's there somewhere innately within our subconscious mind that can come forwards. And it, we think we've got amazing information from them when we've not, we've just remembered it and it was truly buried and forgotten, but it's recalled. So I believe we can never prove we're linking with our own. And that's one of the reasons why it's difficult. Reason number four is our own mind can create it. Our imagination can create a communication with our own loved ones. Uh, mediumship functions from the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is the seat of your psychic faculties, your clairs. It's the seat of your intuition, but it's also where your imagination is located. Mediumship effectively functions through the tools of our imagination. It's just that we learn to quieten our own mind so that we receive information from spirit. So many people will tell me that they're connecting to their own loved ones, when in reality they're not. It's their own mind creating it. And the reason that our own mind can create it is as a coping mechanism to deal with the loss, to help with the grieving process. It becomes a coping mechanism. It's, it serves a purpose. It's beneficial for a while to serve a purpose. And often people will come to my classes or workshops or courses, and they'll tell me that I'm in communication with my loved ones 24 seven. I'm an excellent medium. I'm in constant communication with my loved ones. That always sets a flag going for me, a little warning sign that, is that really the case? And then what happens is over the course of several classes or the course of a week on a workshop, will find out they're struggling to do any mediumship at all for other people. They cannot link to other people's loved ones. And what's happening is they've not developed the skills of mediumship. They have not unfolded those abilities from within. And what's taking place is solely their imagination. The communication is created by their own mind through their own need as part of that coping mechanism I talked about. 
And it's very sad to see that, and it's very hard to tell people that actually what we're witnessing is not real. If it's happening to them, it's real to them, and it's quite hard to say to them it's not. But that's the reality, I see it regularly, that it's people's own mind creating it. The fifth reason, which I think is a very strong one, is the spirit world and your loved ones would not want it. Spirit would not want it. So, spirit probably wouldn't think it was wise to be in constant 24-7 contact with us. They wouldn't want us to be permanently linking and communicating with them because that would hold us back. That would prevent us moving forward. It may prevent us accepting their passing. It may prevent us from working through the loss and the grieving process, the stages of grief. It may prevent us from being able to move forward in our own lives. And I don't believe spirit would want that for us. And I do come across quite a number of people who become addicted to going for readings with mediums. Uh, mediums reunite them with their loved ones and because of that there's an addiction there to constantly be hearing from their loved one all the time and they go from medium to medium to medium. I've met people who have spent thousands upon thousands of pounds doing that and it's not really healthy because ultimately spirit would not want that for them. Spirit would want them to, yes, to know that they're alive within the spirit world, to know that they're fine, absolutely. The best just come forward to let us know our loved ones are there, our loved ones are fine, we haven't truly lost them. But then they generally tend to give us a bit of space to move forwards. And a lot of mediums don't do readings for the same people for a little while. We leave a gap of three or six months between because for that exact reason, we don't want them to become addicted to us as a coping mechanism for dealing with their grief. So I believe spirit would not want that for us. So in conclusion, we can develop mediumship to help us become aware of and sense our loved ones around us and our loved ones close to us. But we can't develop mediumship to be connected to our own loved ones the way other mediums can. It's not the same mechanism. And we can't be communicating and having conversations with our loved ones 24-7. It doesn't work that way. So when we feel our loved ones close, when we sense our loved ones around us, that's wonderful, acknowledge it. When you get a contact from your loved one through a medium in a private sitting or on a platform in a service or in a demonstration, acknowledge it, savour it, it's wonderful to know. But don't constantly seek it. Don't constantly have a need for it. Recognise that they're fine, but recognise we can feel their presence around us, but we don't need to be doing it all the time. So I do hope that you found this video useful. I do hope that you found it helpful. If you have, do hit the like button. Do leave me a comment. If you like my teaching, do subscribe to the channel. Do check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to support the channel, then do check out the courses the teaching that I offer, the classes, the study program. All of those are available from my website and store and there's links in the description below. You can also make a donation to the channel as well. All, all money is going to support in the channel. Uh, there's a PayPal link in the description below. But I do hope that you found this video helpful. I do hope you've got something from it and I look forward to seeing you all again in the next one.